start going through the Formula 1 history books, different eras of the sport can be found depending on the engine configurations used at different stages. So engine varieties like V12s, V10s, V8s and V6s can be found, depending on the most successful and reliable technology that was available in each era. Through this video, we are going to discuss about the V10 era of F1, which is considered as one of the most successful eras of the sport. V10 architecture has a higher reputation in the sport due to its good balance between power and fuel efficiency. So, let's discuss about these V10s in detail. But before we proceed, hit the subscribe button and smash the bell icon for more exciting updates. If we simply define the V10 engines, they are V-shaped engines with five cylinders per side, and the engine was built by mating two inline five cylinders to one package. Even though one five-cylinder set is naturally balanced, it lost its balance when combined with dual engines to one package. So a balance shaft was used to maintain stability, avoiding the rocking motion of the engine. The first ever V10 engine used in Formula 1 was built by Alfa Romeo for its 1986 campaign, but never used in a competition. When the first turbo era of F1 ended in 1988, power unit suppliers thought to go ahead with V10 architecture, which provided solutions to the cons of V12 and V8 engines. So McLaren and Williams teams used these V10 engines from the 1989 season delivering some eye-catching performances using these Honda and Renault V10 engines. Since then, many teams started to use V10 engines, following their footsteps. Honda and Renault V10 engines were clearly ahead of Cosworth V8, Yamaha V8, Lamborghini V12 and Ferrari V12 used in that period. But there is a significant difference between V10 engines used before 1995 and after 1995. According to the regulations, the 3.5-litre formula was in use since 1989 and it was reduced to 3.0-litres formula by the 1995 regulation update. Even though engines were reduced to 3 litres, they were capable of generating a better RPM than their predecessors. V10 engines used after 1995 had the capability of generating a horsepower of around 600 and 1000 HP under a higher RPM rate between 13,000 and 20,000. These engines produced a unique screaming sound which was difficult to hear, but F1 fans really loved that disturbance more than this low noise sound of modern V6s. That noise actually added great excitement to the sport, and the absence of such a noise in modern engines has created a void that can never be filled in the heart of true F1 fans. Even though V10 engines were in use before 1997, the pure V10 era arrived that year as the last team to use V12s, Ferrari also turned towards V10 engines. Normally we considered the period between 1997 and 2005 as the V10 era of the sport as teams purely used only these engine varieties to power their challenges. V12 engines were more powerful than V10 but they were in a very fuel thirsty mode. V8 engines had good fuel consumption but low in power to deliver the optimum excitement of the sport. So considering all these factors, we can rate V10 engines very easily above the V12 and V8 versions. However, V6 turbo hybrid engines that are currently used in the sport are better than V10s in all terms like power and fuel consumption. But the development cost is very high and the internal structure of the engine is much more complex with its hybrid energy recovery system, ranking V6 engines also below the great V10 engines. Up to the 2000s, regulations were not so strict regarding the engine architecture and teams used V8s, V12s and V10s based on their preference. But after 1996, all the teams adopted for V10 engines based on the huge success and advantages enjoyed by teams using that architecture. 
but by the regulations introduced for the first season of the new millennium, the use of V12s was totally banned, making it mandatory to use V10 engines. On the other hand, the V10 era is significant as one of the best manufacture represented eras the sport has ever seen. Top automobile brands like Mercedes, Ferrari, BMW, Cosworth, Honda and Toyota were supplying engines to Formula 1 teams, especially after the 2000s, creating a real war about the reputation of each engine supplier. But nothing was more powerful than Ferrari V10 engines after 2000, as they powered Michael Schumacher's challenger for a record-breaking five consecutive victories during the period between 2000 and 2004. Then their supremacy was destroyed by Renault V10 engines by winning the next two world championships before the introduction of less powerful V8 engines. One feature that we saw in the V10 era was the allocation of refueling in between the races, so drivers didn't have to worry about the tyre or oil management, and it was totally about driving with full throttle. In this era, they used this pit stop strategy as a method to gain an advantage in overtaking. During an F1 podcast, Fernando Alonso praised the V10 era as the best era of F1, and his statement is special as the only active driver that has the experience of driving challengers powered by V10, V8 and the current V6 engines. We were lucky to live the best era of Formula 1, said Fernando Alonso. The V10, all the manufacturers were there. Toyota, BMW, Honda, Ferrari, they were all in that moment with great sponsorship, with great races. Alonso has a special love towards these engines, as he won his championships with powerful Renault V10 engines in 2005 and 2006. After 2006, Formula 1 went for the less powerful V8 engines, creating a huge criticism regarding the replacement of the much more balanced V10 engines with a low-powered variety. What do you think about the V10 engines? Are they overrated in this history? Share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed the video, subscribe to the channel to get more exciting Formula 1 news. See you in the next video, guys. Goodbye.